Do you want to learn more about the insulin resistance diet because you think you're insulin resistant? Well, you're in the right place. Insulin resistance affects a large proportion of American population and also the world too. So its presence often goes unnoticed and unchecked for a long time. In adults, insulin resistance can progress to pre-diabetes and if left untreated, type 2 diabetes. Now, contrary to popular belief, Insulin resistance can be reversed by following an insulin resistance diet and does not always result in prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. It could be a very useful early warning indicator to know that you're insulin resistant, prompting you to assess your diet and lifestyle to see where the changes can be made, right? Well, today we are going to talk about these things. Number one, what causes insulin resistance and how does it develop? Number two, symptoms of insulin resistance look out for. Number three, and the most importantly, dietary approaches to insulin resistance. And we're going to talk about glycemic index as well. And we're going to talk about, you know, all the foods that are low in glycemic index. We're going to talk about medications and homeopathic treatments for insulin resistance as well. And finally, we are going to talk about reversing insulin resistance with the right diet approach and the exercise. Have you downloaded the SugarMD app yet? If not, you are missing out on some great resources for managing your diabetes. Our team of experts offer free coaching via app texting so you can get answers to all of your diet and diabetes related questions. Plus, using the app daily will help you stay on track and help make healthy choices. So, download the app today. Start living your best life. Remember to subscribe to our newsletter for weekly educational emails as well. Now, insulin resistance and how to overcome it. Reversing insulin resistance, regaining energy, controlling blood sugar cravings, and lowering the risk of many lifestyle-related problems all start with minor lifestyle changes. So what causes it, right? Well, belly fat. Around your waist, there is something called visceral and also subcutaneous fat as well. But the visceral fat is found in the abdominal cavity, and insulin resistance occurs when your uh, fat cells, especially, refuse to respond to insulin, preventing sugar from entering to your cells. Now, following that, your body attempts to correct itself by producing more insulin in order to stabilize your blood sugar levels. Now, as you know, insulin is a hormone that regulates the uptake of glucose by cells so it's not a bad hormone, right? You need it. It's just too much of it. When you have excessive insulin, then it becomes damaging, right? So insulin is produced by the pancreas of all types of diabetics, in most of them, right? But their body doesn't respond to it properly. So some of them even require insulin injections, although they make their own insulin. So we have to find ways to make sure your body can actually use that insulin correctly especially before you become diabetic. Here are some symptoms of insulin resistance to look out for. So if you're unaware that you're insulin resistant, you may want to look for something called acanthosis nigricans. These are some brownish, blackish marks on your skin around your neck. It could be under your armpits and so forth. Uh, it's called acanthosis nigricans. Uh, this happens when the skin darkens. Uh, you may actually even see some skin tags in the similar areas as well, which is another sign of insulin resistance. If you are getting to feel like you need to urinate a lot, you're feeling extremely tired, you start getting tingling and numbness in your extremities, you may be already diabetic. If the pancreas produces enough insulin despite the resistance, the, you know, most people will have no symptoms except the things that we talked about. And not everybody will have the acanthosis nigricans or the skin tags and so forth. So it is not a bad idea to look at your blood sugar levels when you have a blood work done and see where you are standing. Now the good news is eating the right foods can actually reverse the process. And a diet, for example, high in unprocessed whole foods is the essential key thing for increasing your insulin sensitivity or decreasing your insulin resistance. So if you continue to eat white bread, cakes, cookies, ice cream, all that goodies, right? Highly processed foods, you're not going to be in luck. Your insulin resistance will continue to pile up and you're going to end up becoming a diabetic if you're not already so. 
Eating foods high in saturated fats, such as sausage, bacon, um, cheese, butter, things like that, especially if they are coming from animals that are not grass-fed, you're not going to do well. If you're eating foods high in glycemic index, you're going to be in trouble. So you have to choose foods that are low in glycemic index, especially when it comes to fruits. Fruits are okay as long as they are low in glycemic index, right? Now, glycemic index determines how fast those carbohydrates turn into sugar in your blood. So with a low glycemic index around 55 or below, you're going to digest and absorb and metabolize the carbs more slowly. So your body will have time to deal with the carbohydrates and will not secrete too much insulin at a time. And it will also help with the weight loss and lower the risk of type 2 diabetes, of course, because your beta cells will not be working as hard. Now, if you have obese children around you, it could be your kids, your grandkids. Again, the perfect diet for them would be a low glycemic index carbohydrates because it is very hard to tell kids to don't eat carbs. It's just they're just not going to listen, right? So, but you can alternate. You can say, hey, instead of instead of uh, maybe uh, you know the grapes, maybe you can go for an apple or something like that. You know, you can alternate or better example would be instead of going for a candy go for grapes you know grapes are even better than a candy so you just need to give those options to your obese children so they do not become diabetic now whole fruits have a lot of fiber in them right so that also helps regulate your blood sugar and weight uh, especially before you become diabetic you may want to eat fruit frequently uh, in small amounts so that your body can help to deal with the toxins you know that your body will have time to produced enough insulin to deal with these high fiber low glycemic index foods as long as you watch your portion size which is probably like your palm size so anything that fits into your palm should be good to go for a, for a portion you can eat pomegranates which i love in in the season you know they help with free radical damage a lot of fruits do right and you can safely uh, consume them because they have so much phytochemicals uh, in them. Even grapes contain something called resveratrol, which is a phytochemical that influences your insulin secretion and action. So if you're not a diabetic, you know, eating 10 grapes or even with diabetes, eating like 10 pieces of grapes is not going to cause significant problems. Strawberry is a great low glycemic index uh, fruit, for example. I highly recommend it to all of my diabetics. Uh, it can also boost your immunity. Uh, it can fight cancer. It can inc improve your metabolism so you can burn more calories. Uh, and of course, help lose weight as well. Uh, guava is low in glycemic index. Sometimes people ask about that. Constipation, it, it will be better if you are suffering from constipation as a diabetic. They, uh, guava has a very high fiber content. Uh, so cherries can be a little problem, but the blueberries, they're high in anthocyanins, which boost your insulin synthesis by up to 50%. There's even hope that the anthocyanins will one day become a basis for some novel diabetes therapies. So papaya, right? You know, people ask about that too, you know, all those uh, fancy fruits. The, it has a lot of uh, antioxidants. It's an excellent choice for diabetics if you want to go for it. Uh, you live in Florida, you will find it everywhere. Texas, you will find it. So papaya has been even shown to improve your longevity uh, by preventing uh, excessive cell damage. Now. How about oranges? Well, there is flavonols in there and some phenolic acid that has been shown to be significant uh, in preventing diabetes as well. Uh, citrus fruits inhibit glucose uptake and prevent glucose from being absorbed. So that's why a lot of you are taking vitamin C, uh, hoping that it helps, right? But again, too much of it, you know, if you're drinking orange juice, that's not going to be really helpful for you. So you also have to consume vegetables. That's a lot of people say, oh, I hate vegetables. Well, don't hate vegetables. There's nothing to hate about them. Uh, they are the best source of vitamins and minerals. They are low in carbohydrates. They are high in fiber. Your body requires nutrients to perform its functions. So you have to have them. Uh, unless you love the liver, which a lot of people can't even, you know, stand the smell. Uh, you have to have vegetables to get all the vitamins and minerals, right? Or you just you know, eat liver a couple times a week, then you'll be good too for if you're just strictly carnivore. 
but oxidative stress is real. It can damage your uh, cells, your muscle, your fat tissue, your nerves. It can cause problems in insulin secretion, but the vegetables with various colors, they contain a lot of antioxidants and vitamins and minerals that then negates the effects of toxins that comes in the food or generated by your body. For example, spinach and kale are two examples of leafy greens which are super high in vitamin A, B, C, K, red peppers, tomatoes, and other vegetables. They're high in polyphenols, radishes, cabbage. Again, they are super high in anthocyanins. They help reduce your insulin resistance. So eating carrots, if in moderation, sweet potatoes, squash can all help boost the insulin production levels or health of your beta cells. Mushrooms, uh, garlic, onions, uh, these are great antioxidants to help uh, fight against diabetes as well. Consuming dairy products, believe it or not, also help reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. If you are consuming uh, like raw cheese or if you are consuming uh, dairy from grass-fed animals, 100% grass-fed preferably, then you're in luck because uh, the calcium, the vitamin D, the dairy fat, especially something called transpalmitoic acid, they've been proposed actually to help prevent the mechanisms causing the diabetes. So transpalmitoic acid, a fatty acid that is found in full fat dairy products coming from grass fed animals really can significantly reduce the risk of insulin resistance and insulin related conditions that are typically diabetes and prediabetes. If you're going for a low carbohydrate diet, a full plate will include high fiber vegetables, some protein and healthy unsaturated fats. So what are the uh, fatty acids that are monounsaturated and polyunsaturated? Well, olive oil, avocados, seeds, almonds, and salmon are excellent sources. And if you cannot go with the organic grass-fed beef or poultry, then it's better to stick with lean cuts of those meats as well. So beans and legumes are also important. Uh, they actually help with insulin resistance. They have a lot of fiber and polyphenols in them as well. Chickpeas, black beans, lentils, they are all great for insulin resistance. Nuts and seeds are also great for healthy fats. They provide magnesium, fiber, and a lot of protein without consuming a lot of carbohydrates as well. And they definitely do not cause a dramatic increase in your blood sugars at all. So nuts are a great source for protein and fat that are plant-based, but you want to go for the raw or unsalted options because sometimes you buy those nuts and they're so processed that there's nothing good left in them. As you know, cardiovascular disease is super common in type 2 diabetics, so make sure that salmon is in your diet or fatty fish, even mackerel and things like that. Omega-3 fatty acids are extremely important to prevent diabetes-related heart problems, heart failure, stroke. Again, fish that are high in omega-3 content are salmon, mackerel, herring, sardines, and tuna. They're good choices. Now, what about medications? A lot of people will say, you know what, this is too much dieting, just give me the medication. Well, there's two medications that can help you. Metformin or pioglitazone or Actos in this case. They help with insulin sensitivity, but they also have side effects, right? So if you're looking for a natural alternative, I would say try Super Berberine, which has dehydroberberine that is five times more absorbable than the berberine, along with the concentrated Ceylon cinnamon, which are proven to be effective for insulin resistant and pre-diabetic patients. Now, how do you test? How do you test that you're, if you're insulin resistant? Well, uh, let's jump to another topic because, you know, we want to keep you uh, awake here, right? So you can actually test for it. You can basically do a test for insulin levels as a fasting insulin level and a glucose levels. And then you can calculate something called HOMA score, uh, which can give you a good idea of your insulin resistance, even before pre-diabetes or diabetes is diagnosed, which is starting at A1C of 5.7. So the higher the HOMA score, the lower your body's sensitivity to insulin. So, or if you're fasting glucose over 100 or two hour glucose after a glucose tolerance test over 140 will suggest prediabetes and insulin resistance. 
And of course, if you are told that you're insulin resistant, then you should try to keep your waist circumference at or below 40 inches for men and 35 inches for women. You have to maintain a regular exercise, as I always tell you, if you really want to reverse insulin resistance in the long term. We have a lot of exercise videos, so just YouTube it. It's exercise and Sugar MD, workout and Sugar MD, you're gonna find videos that will help you tremendously because a lot of people think that exercise is a big, hefty task, but you can have very small changes in your life and you can have a big impact. So that fat around your waist is a primary contributor of insulin resistance, which we call as the visceral fat, right? These fat cells secrete hormones into bloodstream that cause inflammation, which causes insulin resistance, which eventually leads to diabetes. So as a result, make sure you have a consistent exercise routine and a nutritionally sound insulin resistance diet uh, a priority. Increase the amount of nutrient-dense foods consumed in the first half of the day. Have a very light dinner or no dinner if you really want to beat that insulin resistance. If you are having a low glycemic index carbs and a lot of healthy fats and some protein, you're going to have a balanced diet with some exercise. Before you know it, insulin resistance will be gone. Again, you have to have fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, high fiber foods, dairy products with 100% grass fed animals and healthy fats like olive oil and so forth. Even 5% reduction in your total body weight will help dramatically to improve your insulin resistance. So don't think that you have to lose like 50 pounds or 100 pounds to get rid of the insulin resistance. You may be able to do so by just losing 5 to 10% of your body weight. And the best way to do it is intermittent fasting, having a high fat, low carb meals, and again, eating once a day if you can. That's your best way to go. And if you're going to choose a meal, to eat, I would say eat early in the day and skip the meals in the later part of the day and always stay hydrated. And make sure that majority of your meals are plant-based and they are high in fiber. You have to always avoid simple carbs no matter how quickly accessible they are. You rather fast than touching those carbs, right? So don't do that. And if you by mistake eat something like that, you just have to get up and move and burn that off. Even simple things like going for a walk after eating or taking the stairs instead of elevator, they can make a lot of difference. I see when I go to work, I'm the only one taking the stairs and I see all those overweight workers, they just don't. I mean like, okay, well, don't complain because you're not taking the stairs, right? So again, people want to have shortcuts, so there's nothing called shortcut in life. You really want to achieve something, you have to take the long way sometimes to get to where you want to go to be able to achieve what you want to achieve. So I hope you all the success and best of luck and thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and leave a comment and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.